Welcome everybody, Andy42 here and today we are going to have a look at the data assets. So the data assets are mostly used for this categorizing, for example here in the object dropper. You can see every actor has a representation, a name and a category and all of this is defined inside a data asset. This is how a data asset looks. So we have a key for every object, object. we have a category we can put every object in. Then we have an image representing the object like here. And last we have the actor itself. So we're going to have a look in how we can create this for a new actor. And I would say we dive right in and watch everything in action. So I'm going to see you in the map. For this tutorial I'm going to start in the UI example map and here's our object dropper. You can see every actor is referenced by an image, it has a name and if I click on it, it spawns this actor. We have four different categories and you can see if I spawn an actor, this is not just a static mesh, it's the real actor with all the logic. For example here I can turn on the light, turn it off, change the colors or delete it. So you can spawn all your blueprint actors inside of here. So first of all, let's find the data assets. We have a folder called data assets and there in the actor template, there is a template for every actor. I'm going to duplicate it and let's create one for my cap. So let's open it up. First of all, we need to define a unique key. It doesn't matter what the name is, but it needs to be unique. Next, we can define a category. So these are the categories we have added for you. And you can see if I select a child, the parent will also be added. I don't have an image for the cap right now, so I'm just opening the static mesh editor, going to hide the grid and also the representations of the sockets. Let's hide the environment and change the background color. You can of course create a screenshot like ever you want. Important is I'm not deleting the sockets here, only the preview mesh. The sockets are still there in, in their position. So if I'm happy with the image, I'm going to take a screenshot. I'm using Lightshot as my screenshot tool because I can change the image afterwards trying to get a square image and reposition, reposition it a little bit. So let's going to save this here and I'm going to name it cap42. So now I can assign the image to my data asset and last I need to define the blueprint actor I want to spawn, in this case the cap42. Mm -hmm. So let's hit save. The next thing is I'm going to open up the UI palette component and we need to add it to the data list. So data list is just containing all the actors I want to have inside my level. So let's add my, my cap here. And I'm going to press the integrate data asset list. Now it's under the available objects. You can also just add it to the available objects directly. It's the integrate data list is only relevant if you want to add like 50 actors at once. So we have created this possibility for you. And now you can see there's this cap. It has the right name, it has the right image. And if I spawn it, the right actor will be spawned. So this is already working fine. Next, I'm going to show you the automatic mode. First, I'm going to copy the reference because I need the target folder. I want to use the same folder. So first of all, let's put the reference in here. Let's remove the class at the beginning and at the end. But you can, of course, set every target folder you want. I just choose the same one I'm currently in. Let's add a category, put it into decoration. I can add it directly to an actor list. So let's choose the demo list here. And if I put on the search image, 
it will automatically search for an image with the same name. And here you can see it found the image. The first time you run this action, it takes a long time because it needs to reference everything. But after that, it's really just a matter of milliseconds. So this works perfectly. We can choose our data asset list here and integrate it. So now you can see all 50 elements are in there. And at the bottom, there is my cap. So this worked. And now if I hit play, you can see it's working. It has the right name. It has the right image. The important part for finding the image is that you really spell it correctly. Going to show you how you can create a new data asset list. So let's call it data asset tutorial. Delete everything in there. And here I can add new members. For example, I can add my cap here. Let's use this data asset list here and remove all the other categories and objects. I'm going to integrate the list. There's only one element right now, the cap. And don't forget to also add the category. So the cap is in the MISC category. I'm going to add this. And I also can just add only the decoration part if I want to, because it's only in decoration. And of course, you can create your own categories in there. So the last thing is the possibility to add an image. You don't need this, but of course, it's nicer if it, we have a nice image. Next thing we need to open open up the info level and inside the data assets, we need to make sure that our data asset list we just created is inside here. So make sure to add the data asset list you just created here. Okay, now if I hit play, I only have this one image here. It's my miss category and only one item, the cap. So this is already working fine. If I want to add multiple actors, I can of course do it this way but this will take a lot of time depending on the amount of assets you have. So a faster way would be to select everything. And we all have also written a little script for you, add selected data asset to list. Now I can select the list, in this case the tutorial. And if I press OK, you can see all 17 objects have been added to the list automatically. Make sure to save it. Open up the UI palette again. And now I can just press the integrate list and I have all my 17 elements inside of there. Now I had I have a new category, so I'm going to add this. And now I, you can see I have all these different elements here. So just as a reminder, this is only true for the one palette here. And if we have a look at the non-VR UI, there's also the possibility to spawn objects. And you can already see there are different categories and different objects in here. And my cap is not inside here. So just a quick recap from the pawn setup tutorial. Inside there, we also have this component UI and we need to add the actor in here. So let's hit compile and save. And now once I have added it and I hit play, we should also be able to spawn it from the non-VR UI. Let's have a look. And you can see in the miss category, there is my cap 42 and I can spawn it. It doesn't have gravity right now, but it's working the way we expect it to. So this is working fine. And if you have problems with this, just have a look at the last tutorial from the pawn setup. The last thing I wanted to show you Everything else is spawning this nice Niagara particle effect except for the cap. And that's because you need to turn on use CPU. You can do this in the static mesh editor and here's the uh, allow CPU access. And we also added a little script. You can just select your actors and set enable CPU usage. And there you can also enable it. That's very handy if you have a lot of different actors you want to enable or disable it. And now once this is enabled, we should be able to see the Niagara particle effect also for the cap. Okay, so this is working. Next thing I wanted to show you, you can run this action with a lot of actors at once. So that's very handy. 
If you have a lot of Blueprint actors, just define the target folder. I'm also going to use the same folder I'm currently in. Next, let's set the category. Let's put it in the construction one. I can add it to an actor list. So let's also choose our tutorial list here and automatically search for the images. And you can see this was a matter of milliseconds. Everything has been created. Categories, names, images, everything worked fine except for one case. And there it's really important that the spelling is right. So the chair leather, if we open this one up, you can see there's another texture. It's also chair underscore leather in the texture name. So th this was fine. The problem is the texture I wanted to use I have missed the underscore between chair and leather, so it was not able to find it. So the automatic method is a nice way to create a lot of assets fast, but make sure to go in there and check them again. So last, here's a little infographic. So the most important part is the actor info. So that's in the center. Everything is inside the actor info. So your key, your category, your image, and your actor class. You have data asset lists containing all the different actor infos. And it's really important that you assign the data asset lists into the info level. And then you have different possibilities. For example, you have the pawns. For the non-VR pawn, you have the component UI non-VR. And inside there, you can define the different data assets you want to spawn. For the VR pawn, you can spawn pellets. So in this case, you would use the component UI palette, but the palettes can also be directly in the map. In this case, you use the component UI palette directly, like we did in this case here. The window object is also referencing the actor info. You can integrate the information in the component window object. And the last thing is the tiny display. You don't need a special component for that, but you can turn the tiny display on and off inside the crab component. So this is if you crab an actor, for example, my statue and the tiny display is turned on, I will have the image and the name of the object in a nice tiny display. Just make sure for all of these, it's really important that you have the actor info for the actor you want to display and you have a data asset list containing this actor info and this data asset list must be referenced inside your info level for the current level. So this is a lot of configuration, but it is really flexible and can adopt to a lot of use cases. And you can really dive in there and exactly define who can spawn what in which level. So I hope this little infographic helps a little bit. We have provided a lot of already pre-configured objects in our maps. So we have like 80 different objects with all the actor info correctly set up and the object dropper. So you can just go in there and have a look on how we created it. And like always, if you have any questions, join us on our Discord community and I'm going to see you in the next tutorial. Thanks for watching.